After leaving Earth at high speed, Goku was completely stunned. Wow, that was fast. Then, the Supreme Kai explains that the planes in the demon realm operate on magical power. This raises the question of how Bulma is going to fix the other plane. And well, to return to the demon realm, they need to follow the same process they used to leave it. They have to find a big fish called Warp, and it's not a unique fish, all these teleporting fish machines are called Warp. Glorio reveals that these fish can be found on planet Batapi. And, Goku, what's wrong with you, man? What do you think you're doing? They quickly reach the fish, and once everything is settled, Glorio says the password to the fish, but it needs to check if those entering are also demons. The Supreme Kai has pointy ears, but Goku doesn't. But that's okay because the Supreme Kai uses his magic powers to make Goku's ears pointy. After that, they enter the fish, and only then does the Supreme Kai realize he needs to give Kibito the password. He tries to do it telepathically, but there's no time, they get teleported before he can. Because of that, I can't stop imagining Vegeta threatening to beat up the fish to clear the path when he, Bulma, and the rest want to pass through. Anyway, they arrive at that white dimension, but the problem is that Glorio only had permission to return to the third demon world, as that's where he lives. They take the path and exit through the other fish, they enter through the mouth and exit from behind. The third world is the one with land, rocks, and floating volcanoes that we saw in the opening and trailers. They end up passing through a tunnel with a light shield. The Supreme Kai explains that this tunnel leads to the second and then to the first demon realm. Before, the passage was free, but when the Supreme Kai was small, they placed a light shield. The way the Supreme Kai spoke makes it seem like he grew up in one of the demon realms, but it's unclear. Due to the seal, they can't cross it and need to use the fish. That's when Glorio starts acting suspicious, he says, yeah, only the folks from the first world and a few others from the second world can use the fish. But how if he said he's from the third world? He then says he can pass because he works in the first world. And to me, Glorio is lying. As I mentioned in the previous video, I say again in this video, either Glorio is being used, or he's plotting something, probably revenge. Revenge from someone who was oppressed. Moving on, Goku asks to descend to appreciate the air of the place, but besides the unpleasant smell, the air is also very heavy, thanks to the gas covering the area, making movement a bit difficult. A curious thing is that they find a statue of the ancient King Dabura. But here's where I got confused, the King of the Third World and the King of the First World are different according to Glorio? If that's the case, Dabura was the King of the First World, which is the world of Goma. Was there only one king for all three worlds before Dabura's abduction, and only after that, each world got its own king? We'll find out. Anyway. After that, there's an interesting conversation. Glorio says that Shin is a glind, and that many glind lived in the second demon world. Notice he says many live there, not that Shin was born there, but maybe. Meanwhile, Goku was chasing an innocent animal and almost fell into the sea of darkness. Gloria warns, if you fall in there, you'll die instantly. I believe this area will be explored in future episodes. After this, some demons start shooting arrows at Goku, but the air is so dense that the arrows are very slow. Glorio finally acts and makes the demons retreat by shooting at them. After that, they return to the plane, and since night was falling, Glorio says they'll stay at a hotel and that the next morning they'll meet King Kadan, who is the king of the place. They arrive in the city and go to the hotel, but the guy is charging a lot just for one night. However, Glorio acts once again like an old school gunslinger and threatens the hotel guy. As always, Goku is starving, so they decide to take a break to eat, but the demons there start mocking Goku for not having pointy ears. And here, once again, I want to highlight my theory that there's only one demon realm for all 12 universes since we see several familiar figures here. In the previous episode, we saw those purple cats, and now we see some dog or wolf-like demons. Identical to the ones we saw in the Tournament of Power. A special mention goes to a demon who looks almost identical to Drum and Tambourine, the monsters Piccolo Daimau spat out in classic Dragon Ball. Anyway. A wild brawl breaks out, and it's a pretty cool sequence. Unfortunately, Goku didn't use his power pole, but it was still a fun fight sequence. After this, everyone goes to sleep, and when they go to leave the next day, Glorio's plane had been stolen by those troublemakers. 
they left a note with one of their axes, saying something like parking spot of the little angels. And that's how the episode ends. Well, this was definitely a character introduction episode, mainly for Glorio. We see what I said in the last episode, that he's a mysterious guy and is up to something. And here we go with some developments and expectations for the upcoming episodes. And well, today we're going to talk about Neva and his possible connection to the legendary character Zalama. Many believe Zalama will finally make his appearance in Dragon Ball Daima. And the way it will happen will be through the old Namekian. Could it be that Zalama will actually appear? Could Neva be Zalama himself? Or is Zalama the dragon inside the three Dragon Balls created by Neva? Let's analyze. Well, Salama is one of the most mysterious characters in the entire Dragon Ball saga. After all, he was only mentioned but never appeared. It's said that he was the creator of the Super Dragon Balls, and because of that, it's believed that Salama is a Namekian. But now that we've discovered that Namekians are actually demons who fled from the Makai, and that Neva is the last and one of the oldest Namekians in history, he probably knows about Salama, met him, or perhaps he, Neva, is Salama. First, because he is the creator of the Dragon Balls of the Makai. As we know, to create the Dragon Balls, a Namekian must be very powerful and possess great wisdom as well as special abilities. Second, because we saw Neva restore Earth's Dragon Balls back to their normal state, something we've never seen any other Namekian do before, which could prove that Neva is indeed wiser, more skilled, and consequently more powerful than the other Grand Elders. And lastly, we have to remember that Neva created the Dragon Balls of the Makai, which are only three, while the rule has always been seven. And not only that, he created extremely powerful beings to protect them. So, if he only needs three Dragon Balls instead of seven, it could indicate that he needs fewer Dragon Balls to do the same as the other Grand Elders. Well, there are those who believe that Salama is actually the primordial dragon and that he may be sealed within those three Dragon Balls while others believe that Salama actually took over Neva's body and created those Dragon Balls to protect his spirit and live forever. However, I believe that Neva is either Salama's disciple or predecessor, just as the Grand Elder Guru was to Dend. And that's why Neva is so powerful. But now I want to know your opinion about everything we talked about in today's video.